What is going on, everybody? So I've been away for a little while. I've been posting videos slightly ahead of schedule. And it turns out ASUS has updated the ROG Ally to enable AMD fluid motion frames. Now, this is a huge deal because a lot of people were waiting for the official implementation of this feature to the ROG Ally specifically, including myself. I couldn't wait to see how ASUS was planning to provide extra frames to those much needed games. Now, I finally updated my ROG Ally and I tested this feature with my favorite games, but most importantly, I tested it with Resident Evil 2 Remake. For me, this is personally the only game I need to test because it's going to be the one that I play the most. So if a feature doesn't work that great with this specific game, then I don't need to check any other. That's how biased I am towards this. But I tested out the fluid motion frame feature and it's a bit strange because you can't use lower TDP with it. Mainly fluid motion frames works best when your FPS is at 50, 60, or sometimes even 70 in order to push it to that 100 FPS limit. But the idea for fluid motion frames on the RG Ally is to set your games to 1080p, push it with 18 to 25 watts to about 50 to 60 FPS in certain titles, and enabling fluid motion frames will push your FPS closer if not to the exact 120 FPS mark. And originally this was supposed to defeat the idea that the ROG Ally can't display 1080p and also at 120 FPS. But now with fluid motion frames, it can theoretically. And with a bit of practice, I was able to get Resident Evil 2 Remake above 100 FPS, but that was in the beginning area. In the later areas, it floated around 70 FPS. Now, this was a little impressive because I pretty much wasn't compromising anything in terms of graphical settings. I set the rendering method to normal instead of interlaced, and that usually makes the FPS hover around 40, sometimes even high 30s. But I find that to be good enough because the game looks great. But with fluid motion frames, I was able to get around 70 FPS in certain locations. But that's where the good stuff ends. With most locations, for some reason, the FPS fluctuated a lot more than usual with frequent stutters, unless I placed the TDP at 18 watts. But at that point, putting it at 18 watts will get me higher than 40 FPS, even if I set the rendering method to normal. But without fluid motion frames, the FPS is actually a lot more smooth, like I was seeing a lot of people reporting online on Reddit, YouTube, and all those forums, most people don't really see the difference. In fact, they see a performance degradation. For example, the FPS would go from 70 to 20, and that causes a lot of stuttering. VRR can't save you from 50 FPS jumps. It's a gaming handheld, not a conjuring spell in Harry Potter. So at a certain point, I just turned fluid motion frames off and set my graphical settings back to normal, and I was able to get 70 FPS with a much improved frame timing in Resident Evil 2 Remake. I actually prefer playing the game with Radeon Boost and Anti-Lag without fluid motion frames. And you could just turn the feature on and off whenever you want. But as of right now, I do not recommend fluid motion frames because sometimes it works and it works really great, but it's only in areas that allow it to work pretty well. It's really cool to see the FPS go up to 100, at such low TDP sometimes, but for about 80% of your experience, you're gonna see massive jumps from 100 to 20 FPS. So you can update to this latest driver, but I am hearing that certain titles are crashing, such as Fallout New Vegas. I'm gonna try that as soon as I stop recording, but that's a game I don't really play much anyway, but I am planning to play that again because that Fallout series is awesome. But if you are planning to use fluid motion frames, just know that certain games might not work, just like with previous driver updates, they just forced and rushed this one out just to have this cool fluid motion frames ready to be shown off. And I think that's the wrong reason to push out an update. I would personally test at least 100 games before setting this update out to millions of people. The first game I tried wasn't even that impressive with fluid motion frames, and that was my favorite game. So. Personally, I'm not going to try it. I still appreciate how the ROG Ally naturally performs, especially with the RE engine. In the future, I may test more games just to pique my interest. But for right now, it doesn't play my all-time favorite game. So that's all I personally need to know. I'm not going to use it. And I can't really recommend other people using it personally. But if you do want to use it, all you have to do is go to Armory Crate, update all. It updates everything, including the BIOS, if you haven't done that, just like I didn't. So you're going to need to update 
everything in Armory Crate, but sometimes the graphics driver doesn't update automatically. So you're going to need to go to the official ASUS website to update the graphics driver manually. And all you have to do is click on the download and install it like I did. So fluid motion frames is mainly if you're using more than say 13 or 14 watts, but most likely a lot of people had the idea that they would be able to save power and also get more performance. But that is really not what fluid motion frames is for. Pretty much there's a bit of lag when using it, but it's not as much as I was expecting. It kind of feels like SteamOS 1.0. It has a certain amount of lag there, but it's not too much that it affects your gameplay, but it is a noticeable delay so there's that as well if you plan on using fluid motion frames there is a bit of a delay as if you have vsync on because there are artificial frames being generated so if you're playing a game like resident evil 2 remake and you plan on getting a lot of headshots in most likely you're going to miss some just like how you saw with my gameplay here i missed that headshot i just said fuck it but pretty much fluid motion frames for the rg ally is exactly what I thought it would be. Just a lot of software for a small device that doesn't have as much power as the fluid motion frames requires it to have to run properly. It runs good sometimes and runs bad most of the time. So it's just okay. It's not that great. It's pretty cool to see the high FPS sometimes, like I said before, but I wouldn't completely recommend it. The delay is not really that bad. It's actually impressive how little it is delayed by the fluid motion frames. But yeah, let me know if you're having trouble with this update. I read a lot of comments on other videos stating that certain features weren't working for them, such as the overlay. If you didn't see in the video already, AMD software does have an overlay of its own. So you can enable that in order to track how many frames your game is running at, like I did. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good one. Later.